Hey everyone, how's it going? I've got a quick tip for you this month and it's all about displacement and bump mapping. And what has this got to do with rendering for comics? Well, glad you asked. This uh, method is important for something like uh, background elements and it is vital to know about because you're gonna have to decide if you want high res uh, stuff in your scene or if you can get away with low res stuff that just basically just casts shadows that look good. Now what I've got on screen are two objects with the same material and I'll take you through how this material is set up. It's basically a diffuse shader with a brick pattern which is a procedurally generated texture within a blender and one is actually a very high res mesh as you can see here. There's, there's lots of dots here, right? And the other is a very low res mesh. You can see it's just one face. But both of them have this brick pattern and you can see that this one uh, actually is showing uh, these bricks are sort of sticking out and everything. But if I was to go into edit mode on this, you can actually see that the, um, the plane itself is flat. What's going on with both of these and why is there a difference in how it's, uh, it's, it's showing the material? Well, let's take a look at the material. But first, I want to show you something that is very easy to overlook. And this is what gets people tearing their hair out. Now, I'm gonna go down to our material settings here and I've created this comic shader roughness. And under our materials, uh, tab. Okay, I've shut down everything. I want to go down to its settings here down the bottom and under surface you'll see that uh, you'll have this thing called displacement method and you yours will probably be set to bump only by default and so you're trying to do a displacement map. You follow all the tutorials and all of a sudden it's like hang on a minute I've got this really high resolution mesh um, why is it only giving me a bump map? But it's probably because you haven't switched it from bump only to something like displacement only. And did you see what happened on the other material here? Now this has disappeared. Or displacement and bump, okay? Which I've got here so that both can show up. Also, you're probably only looking at either solid or um, the look development branch, these in cycles only tend to show up um, in full rendered mode. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to have a very high resolution render, okay? So first off, let's take a look at the material. We've, we've set this to displacement and bump, okay? But my recommendation is that you set it to the setting that makes sense for your scene. So if you're going to be using displacement material um, and there's some high res meshes which can, are capable of uh, displaying it correctly, then set it to displacement only. If you're going for just bump maps, I would recommend leaving it on bump map. Okay, and again, I have to stress, this is a cycles render setting. I'm gonna show you something with Eevee uh, in a second, but I've got it set to displacement and mumps, bump so we can see everything. Now, what about that material? Well, let's open up this and let's see what's going on. So first and foremost, all I've got is a diffuse shader. That's it. It's a nice, simple shader to use uh, that will catch shadows. And I've got this brick texture. Now, I could just plug in the brick texture uh, or its color or its factor, but we get really weird stuff happening when we do that. I mean, just take a look at what's happening over here. Uh, if I set the, um, the factor as my displacement in my material output, we get this really weird skewing. Why is that? Well, it's, it's not keying off your normal. Okay, it's keying off uh, some sort of a weird uh, uh, color mat or something like that, and it's sort of matting it, uh, mapping it to that. Uh, and so you're getting this, this strange effect. And that is why in cycles, we need to uh, create this displacement node. All you have to do is go Shift A, Vector, Displacement. Now there's a bump one, there is a vector displacement, but guaranteed displacement works the best even for bump maps. Uh, so I've added that. I've dropped my mid-level to zero 
and I've added my scale at about 0.4 or 40%. Now I'm going to run the color output of this brick texture because my bricks are a black and white um, gradient. You can see here that my colors are white, gray, and black, okay? Um, and I've just got all these settings. You can set it to whatever you want. And then I run that into the height input of the displacement mode, and I set it to object space. I connect the displacement output into the displacement input of our material output, and now we've got something that looks correct. And you see how these bricks sort of have a differing pattern, okay? Now, what we wanna do is we wanna see what that uh, is actually doing. This is the color, and you can see that the color has got black mortar, so everything's gonna be subtracted there. And then you've got a variation on the grays of the bricks. The brick texture automatically takes these two colors, right, and randomizes it over the bricks. Now you can change all sorts of things. You can change the, the, the offset, the, the frequency, uh, or the scale of the bricks, everything like that. And because it's a material, when we set this up, so let's just bring that uh, diffuse thing back, it means that we can change things like the scale uh, or you know uh, the, the brick width or anything like that to be uh, something really interesting uh, on the fly and the object responds to it. So that is essentially the material. It's, it's really, really simple to set up. And because this particular uh, object is a very high res mesh, that means there is information in that mesh to deform. Now, keep in mind, we're doing this for background objects, which don't actually need a lot of deformation. And this is going to make your renders chug, it's gonna make your file very large. And uh, if you've got, you know, about 20 buildings or something with all this high res resolution density, it's going to grind your computer down to a halt. And so the alternative is to use a bump map. Okay, this is, keep in mind, this has got exactly the same material, but it's only one face. And as you can see, the bump map does not give you any deformation. Like if we looked at the top view here, you can see that nothing is sticking out. Whereas our other material, you can see that uh, all these bricks are pointing out. Now, I set my mid-level to zero because this is what that actually does. Let's, let's just take a look at the top view of our uh, deformed one with displacement on it. If I set the mid-level to 50%, now you can see that the deformation uses the mesh surface as the midpoint and then deforms based on the value of those bricks, uh, either sinks them in or blows them out. Okay, so we were to look here. Uh, and so by having it at zero, it basically gives me a good indication on where that mesh would be if I needed to edit it, okay? And so I like to have that as my, as my zero. This is just a personal preference. I like to have that as my zero plane and then everything in front, but you can sort of adjust it. Similarly, the scale means that we can have uh, much deeper bricks. It only goes to a certain point, of course, but like, you know, much deeper uh, deformation. I mean, look at that brick wall now. That's looking really random, uh, or a very shallow deformation based on those grays. And around about 0.4 gives us enough to take a look at. And so the displacement map gives us those options to uh, create that variance. And it's all at the material level. There are no um, assigned modifiers or anything like that. And plus, as far as procedural textures go, I don't think something like a brick texture or even checkerboard um, allows you to map on to a displacement modifier. That's more if you've got your own custom material. So this is a really good way of doing it. And of course, you can edit it on the fly. But let's go back to this bump map. Um, the advantage here is that you can create buildings that are essentially cubes uh, or cylinders and just have that bump map because it reacts to the light. Okay, you can see that as I rotate this light around, or well, let's rotate it in the X direction or something like that, or maybe rotate in the Y direction, you can get all the sort of lighting that you need and the bump map reacts to the in-scene lighting. And so all your buildings with these uh, new textures that you've created procedurally, 
um, are going to look really good in the background. There is other, uh, one other advantage of the bump map, okay, and that is with freestyle. Now, freestyle, unfortunately, will not render a line along these bumped out surfaces. What you're going to get is this horrible straight line because it keys off the edges of the uh, base object. Okay, and so if you want that, I would suggest you bake this texture down, apply it as a displacement modifier, and then do some sort of a, a, a renormal mapping thing uh, to get your, your low res objects and then use freestyle. But for background objects, you know, we can start to move away from using freestyle lines and there are other methods of rendering a little bit of what you'd say is line work on them. Now, before I get into that, I do want to show you the one caveat and that is that Eevee won't displace things exactly the same and it doesn't have, um, it doesn't allow for this sort of uh, displacement material. So why don't we go ahead and switch our render engine over to Eevee and see what happens. Well, we can see, let's go into look development mode, rendered mode, that the displacement has indeed uh, sort of switched away, but there's something else in Eevee that you don't need. You don't actually need a displacement node. You can go and plug that color directly into the slot and Furthermore, you can just look at the look development and you can have that um, bump map show up. Now, this means that having really high res me meshes is obsolete because, you know, Eevee, you want nice quick renders, okay? Um, and so you, it works great for bump maps and you don't even need that displacement node at all, right? All you need is a color and a texture. Uh, for the displacement, right? So Eevee does simplify things down, but the disadvantage is that we don't get that wonderful displacement. So that is the um, the difference with Eevee. So we'll go back to cycles here. We'll bring in our distortion again, and let's go back into rendered mode. Now, speaking of rendering, I've got a, a little setup here um, that we can uh, use. And so why don't we go ahead and render this and let's take a look at a couple of things we can do to create that comic effect. Now, there was a tutorial I did a couple of months ago which show you how to uh, take out the just the diffuse color so we can get a color pass and just the shadow information so that we can see uh, a shadow pass. And what we can see here is that the shadows on the displacement look really good, but they don't look half bad on the bump. And of course, you know, if you have a displacement or bump uh, node, you can increase or, or tweak those bump map settings, right? Uh, the only difference is that we have this straight edge, so the bump map will never sort of deform it beyond that edge. Now, I've just sort of set things up so that we've got this uh, shadow and diffuse mapped uh, the shadow over the diffuse, and I've just basically because not, neither of them carry an alpha, um, I've had to do a set alpha on this on the, on the diffuse one, but then that carries over um, uh, for, for anything that you can posit over on the multiply. And then what I've also done, let's go into our uh, settings here, okay? Um, uh, under filter, I've got environment and surfaces but I've also enabled my normal pass. Now, if you do want some sort of uh, hokey line work, there is a hack here, and that is using the normal pass. You can see that we've got this lovely uh, blue and red over here. You can do a few things with this, and so what I'll do is I'll just sort of take you through my particular hack uh, to create a uh, rough line work for background images, okay? So this would be on a layer that you don't do any freestyle because let's say you do want that displacement to show up, but freestyle is cutting it off with its edges, okay? What we do is, first off, we get a, uh, a separate HSV will do, and let's take a look at the value of that normal. You can see that we get this lovely black and white, and so if we were to invert that, we'd have some really nice black. So why don't we go ahead and add an invert node on there, it's the contrast isn't great, okay, 
Um, but it will do for now. And then we can just mix it over or multiply it over our combined image here. Let's go multiply. And we have the beginnings of what could be like almost like a faded out uh, type of line work. So if we were to take that away, you can see that's what it looks like. And if we were to bring that up, we can get this sort of line work. Now, this does not, this is by no means a, uh, you know, a substitute for something like freestyle or if you're using the LAN, LAN PR build or whatever. Um, this is great for backgrounds because if you get right in there, there's a little bit of fuzziness in there and it's just one of those ways that you can get some edge detection that is halfway distant, but I'd only sort of like do it for background objects where you just sort of need it a little bit faded, okay? And so that's my quick tip for this month, all to do with displacement. Um, you can get this working file in the link below the video that you're watching here on YouTube. If you enjoy these videos, do subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you're feeling at all generous, um, you can support me uh, as, for as little as a, a dollar a month over on Patreon so that I can continue to create these videos and this content. Okay, uh, this is Paul for now, signing off. See you next time.